Matthew's keen to see if he can trace his ancestors even further back. He's come to the College of Arms, which has recorded the pedigrees of aristocratic families since the 15th century. This is where we keep our manuscript collections. Peter O'Donoghue is one of the College Heralds. And this is a fabulous early 17th century royal pedigree relating specifically to the Howard family. And it shows you the ancestry of the family going back. So where are the Howards that I know about? So here is William Howard, the first yes. Baron of Effingham. And he was also the son of Thomas, the Duke of Norfolk. Now if we move along to the next manuscript, perhaps we should go around here. As you can see, this is a, a really beautiful yeah. 15th mm. century pedigree roll. Your direct line comes in through here. Here's Margaret, daughter of Thomas, Duke of Norfolk. Goodness me, we're yeah, back to 1280, 1286 by now. And we can follow the line back up to Thomas of Brotherton. Thomas of Brotherton was the eldest son of... Edward. Edward the... Edward the First. First? Yeah. So Thomas of Brotherton was the eldest son of Edward I by his second marriage to Margaret of France. So your direct ancestor is Was Edward, the first. Edward the First. Yeah. So, Matthew is directly descended from royalty. One of medieval England's renowned military kings, Edward I was known as Longshanks, the Hammer of the Scots. He was a great king, actually. Did a lot towards the establishment of modern, modern ideas of parliament and so on. The family always speaks well about him. <laughs> <laughs> Another manuscript traces the royal line even further back. So here is Edward I, your ancestor. Probably not, you know, accurate. A, an accurate portrait, I suspect. We can follow the line back through the other English kings. Edward's father, Henry III, not a great success as a king. And he was the son of John, King John, who signed Magna Carta, of course. So you're just directly descended from the king who signed Magna Carta probably the most famous legal contract in the world. Mm. We can go back in time again. Richard I, famous from the Robin Hood stories, of course. Back again. So that uh, takes you all the way back to William Conqueror, which is rather, rather a fine thing, I think. And you, you are directly descended from William the Conqueror. What do you think about that? That just... Oh. It's very difficult to get your head around that sort of... Uh, well, it is, and it's not, and it, but it's actually not within... When you go back, that's getting on for a thousand years of history. That's right, yeah, yeah. In, well, we were about 20 generations there, so there's another five or six, you know, probably 30, 30 generations of... Yeah. It's difficult, to, it's difficult to get your head around. As a matter of fact, this role, this, this medieval role here, can take us further back than that. We're back into prehistory here. The dates have run out. Yeah, just as well, I think, because otherwise they would be laughable. Okay, so there's Woden. There's Jesus. Stop it. Why do they put Jesus on there? Because a legitimate king must oh, have Jesus felt... in his ancestry. Or at least, you know, wanted to prove on the that same he was document there. as his ancestry. Right. There we go back. There's King David. You may be able to sense which direction we're going in here. <laughs> Back again, further and further. And so we've got Cain and Abel. Adam, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. And at the top of your pedigree, there is God. So you are directly descended from God. Well, we all are, of course. That's pretty, pr pretty much as far as you can go, really, isn't it? By divine right, kings were believed to derive their power directly from God. Be that as it may, Matthew is, with certainty, directly descended from kings. <laughs>